Today I want to talk about a comment I get under almost every video I do about a tabletop RPG system that uses fewer than the 6 ability scores we're used to from Dungeons and Dragons, Tales of the Valiant and Pathfinder and why I think having fewer ability scores and other systems in place to further customize your character can be better. Much, much better. Hi there fellow role players and game masters, my name is Mr. Tarask and today I want to talk about fewer ability scores than the 6 we're used to from Dungeons and Dragons, Tales of the Valiant, Pathfinder and those games. I'm talking of course about Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Wisdom, Intelligence and Charisma and why having only 3 or 4 sometimes it can be better, much much better, especially if there's other systems in place to further customize your character for your abilities to make sense, your skills and your abilities to make sense for your character in uh, particular and today I want to use the cipher system as an example now you don't need to know the cy cipher system to uh, follow this video but if you are interested in the cipher system after watching this video uh, there's a link somewhere here that you can click that takes you to a five minute video of me explaining the cipher system in like five minutes to you the reason I want to use this cipher system uh, for this video is really simple also I don't want to tell you what RPG you should play I still play fifth edition I love fifth edition every game serves its purpose as a matter of fact after the OGL thing happened with Wizards of the Coast I started seeing tabletop RPGs more like um, board games and I just played different ones for different occasions for with different people right so the cipher system uses only three ability scores it uses um, there are really ability scores in the same sense as for example fifth edition but for simplicity I will I will call them ability scores because they, in a vague sense, serve the same purpose, but it just works a little bit differently. They use um, uh, might, speed, and intellect. Now, there's only three, which at first glance you might be like, wait a second, I cannot like make a super versatile or super specific character with that. Uh, your might, of course, combines your strength and your constitution. Uh, it is how, how good you can lift rocks, but how long you can hold your breath, that kind of stuff. Your speed is more about your like dexterity, dodging bullets, uh, um, uh, I don't know, uh, swinging from it chandelier or I don't know sneaking up to something or trying to steal something pickpocket and your intellect kind of combines your wisdom intelligence and charisma together into one stat now you might ask yourself what hey Mr. Tarask right I have a problem how in heaven's name can I build a character with this that um for example just a stupid example I want to build a um a pirate a nimble pirate or a a circus acrobat right the kind of person that is strong not because they are powerful strong muscle strong but they are athletic strong they're more like nimble strong they are circus strong if you know what i mean meaning that i want to build a character with the six ability scores i would give that character um high constitution because they are athletes right um but high dex because they can like walk over ropes or swing from ropes or that kind of stuff but uh, i would give them a lower strength score because they aren't really like muscle strong they're not like really built to lift heavy objects but when i put like my numbers into might when i when i pump up my might i am implying that my character is super strong and i'm implying that my character has a lot of muscle if i up my might and this is the way of thinking that is wrong and a lot of people comment this below my cypher videos other like when i talk about nimble the same it's the same thing people talk about that like i cannot build a like a specific character with that but you can because it is just your mindset that kind of needs to change change oh, for the cipher system um the stats are are your baseline right they are your baseline you have might you have a pretty high might that means you're just a healthy person you don't necessarily have like a shit ton of muscle but you're just like a healthy strong person because you have a lot of might you can hold your breath for a while you can lift some heavier objects not like super heavy boulders or anything but you are just like a like a proper athletic person right if you have high might um now if you want to be like yeah but let's say i want to be good at swimming i want i'm going to use swimming for an example and this is where the cypher system comes in and they and they make it like really really handy to create a really specific character the cypher system introduces a very very new thing called skills 
I'm just kidding. Skills aren't new, but the way they're introducing it is uh, is different from fifth edition. It's different from other things because in uh, the cipher system, you basically have three levels for your skill. First of all, your skill list is empty. There isn't a particular set of skills. There isn't like these are the skills, deal with it, and these are the ability scores tied to that skill, deal with it. That's not how it works in the cipher system. In the cipher system, you have um an empty sheet and for example i'm going to use swimming as an example because i personally mr Tarosk, me uh, i'm a pretty good swimmer i've i've been i i swam competitively like when i was younger um and i've been a lifeguard for like 10 years of my life professionally so i know how to swim i know how to hold my breath i'm not like uh like a like a competitive swimmer right now but i'm a pretty good swimmer right so i would give myself an ability in swimming. So in other words, I would be trained at swimming. I would be pretty good at swimming and I have like one trained in swimming, meaning that swimming checks become uh, automatically easier for me. No matter how much might I have, no matter how much speed I have, no matter how much intellect I have, I don't know what that has had to do with anything, uh, swimming checks are easier for me as a person. I'm just like taking me as a person, right? I don't have like super a lot of might. I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm good, but I'm not like super strong, right? Right, so I just have a good baseline of might, but um, I'm trained at swimming. Now, the, what Cipher System does really well is they kind of have three levels in a skill. They have trained, they have specialized, and they have an inability. And you can have all of those. If you're trained in a skill, uh, it becomes one step easier. You don't need to know the details. It becomes one step easier to make that check. If you are specialized in something, it becomes two steps easier to make that check. If you have an inability in something, it becomes one step more difficult for you to make that check. Now you might be asking yourself, how can you have an ability and a disability or be trained and have a disability or an inability, whatever, in like one skill. Now swimming is a perfect example for that. Let's say I train my fucking ass off in swimming and I become specialized in it. I make like a bronze medal at the Olympics, right? I'm super specialized swimming super fast i automatically every time when i swim i have a easier time in um an easier time making that check every time when somebody tosses me in the cold water i can make those checks better right because i trained my ass off then i get into a car accident and i lose a limb i lose a freaking lack knee down i lose it that way i could have also have an inability in swimming it's a stupid example i know it's a super super vague example but um it gets the the message across i feel right so this is really really good to make a super specific character um because now you can say like oh i have an ability in swimming um my baseline might is okay but i'm really good at swimming but you might have an inability in climbing for example you might be a really good swimmer but a really bad climber or somewhat bad climber that's perfectly possible although you have a good baseline might you're quite strong i personally am a good I'm, I'm not a super good climber, so I would have like an inability in climbing and I would have like a, um, a, a trained in swimming. Um, but my might, my baseline might would just be the same, right? And the reason the skill list is empty makes it really, really versatile. And it's the same thing with your intellect, for example. Your intellect even crosses more stuff. For example, if you have a pretty good intellect, that also translates into different things for different people. Um, for example, uh, a good intellect can make you a good public speaker or good with people or good with animals or that kind of stuff. So one of your uh, trained abilities could be animal handling or performance or whatever but good intellect also could translate in just being less good with people so you could have like an inability in social encounters and you could be trained into like knowing stuff from reading a book really fast so you might be able to uh gather a lot of information from a library really quickly and you'd be trained at that your baseline intellect would be pretty good you have a pretty good baseline intellect but it just translates different for different people into different 
different skills because of uh, the way uh, they were born or their life encounters kind of like put them in different correction, uh, directions though you might went to like I don't know a this kind of school might have taught you more like math and science and that kind of school might have taught you how to play the freaking violin your intellect um, kind of just translates in different things and that's why the open skill system with like the three levels the trained um, uh, specialized and inability makes it super versatile although you only have three baseline ability scores and one of the reasons why I like the cipher system is because whatever character you built, it is built into the character options, the races, the classes, whatever, that you will have some trained skills and some trained abilities, but you will also have some inabilities, giving you downsides to your characters. And I think having characters with flaws are, is one of the best role-playing tools in any RPG. Having flaws to your character is super important. For example, when I play 5th edition, I often play like this. 84 year old wizard human wizard who has 20 speed instead of 25 i don't need anything to balance that out i just take 20 speed i'm just like slower than the rest right because i'm an old fart right and but the cypher system automatically builds that in you end up with a character sheet with like flaws it has inabilities for example you have an inability in social encounters but you have an ability in finding information from a library, right? Um, I, as a game master, and this is a top tip from me, I, as a game master, further customize that. I give my players at the start of, um, like, session zero, when they're building their character, I tell everybody, if you want to take an extra skill, if you want to be trained in something specific, you um, can perfectly do that whatever it is come up with something as long as it makes that sense for your character come up with something you can do that you can take an extra trained skill but to compensate that you also need to take an extra inability and this is always super interesting what people come up with some people like are are like i don't know they come up with like the weirdest combinations just to get like this skill here but the more you train in like one aspect of life the the, the worst another aspect of life gets because you kind of neglect it, right? So um, I give my players the option, not all players take that option, but some players really love the role-playing potential of having those inabilities uh, at the start of the game and for the entire for the entire game, basically. To add to that, if people want to take a super specific skill, like climbing, for example, they also need to take a super specific inability because that kind of balances it out. It's super specific. The one thing is super specific. The other, if they want to take something vague, like, I don't know, social encounters, that's something that can span over many different roles you do, like talking to an innkeeper, trying to like, um, I don't know, gather information at an inn or bring down the price of a magic item. That kind of stuff is a social encounter. If you want to be good at that, that is something that comes up much more in the game. Game, then you also need to take an inability uh, in something that comes up much more in the game. And it's really cool at session zero, there's always like this back and forth between me, the game master, and the players. Like, hey, if I take this, what kind of skill can I take an inability in? And then we talk about it. And it really, really makes the character customization really fun in the cipher system. And that is basically why I think sometimes having fewer ability scores can be much better because it teaches you how to color outside of the lines because with six ability scores and a set set of skills you have on your character sheet, everybody is always trying to fit their character within those six ability scores. With something like the Cypher system, there's other RPGs that do it well as well, um, you're not trying to get your character into those three things, you're not like trying to make your entire character into those three things it is actually your skills that you come up with with your um, game master or from the book your really specific and vague skill list that's different for every game that is where you design your character and it is super open-ended and it invites like back and forth between the player and the game master and it is really much more emphasis on storytelling for your character a background for your character and just like role-playing potential during the game because you have trained skills and inabilities in skills. Now, I want to get something else out of the way because this is a comment I get also a lot uh, that kind of ties into this. Um, some abilities just don't make sense for some checks all the time. And many people complain about that, that games are designed about like, I don't know, swimming is a might check oftentimes. Right? When in some occasions it should be a speed check. For example, for me, a trained swimmer in a 
swimming gear, it is more a speed check because it's all about technique. It's all about buoyancy, right? It's not, I don't need to use my strength in order to kind of like keep swimming. Um, there is a little bit constitution involved to keep like moving, of course, but most of it is technique. Most of it is, most of it is uh, speed. So for me, it would make more sense uh, for a speed check. But if you take me and you put like plate mail on me, right? And a rucksack and you toss me into a river that is going at like 6,000 miles an hour or whatever, it isn't the speed check anymore. It is isn't. It is about like keeping my head afloat and kicking my feet as hard as I can and keeping that going as much as I can. And then it kind of becomes a my check. And that is okay. This, these games have game masters for a reason. As a game master, you can always judge the situation and be like, you know what, if you want, you can use a my check for this instead of speed. Or you know what, if you want, you can use a speed check instead of, the, instead of might for this particular check because we are in this particular situation. Until next video, bye-bye.